Happy Monday to you and your loved ones. My name is Sarah Otieno and thank you so much for tuning in to This Is The Day. We are live on Family TV and also live on Family Radio where the music does the talking. And of course we are keeping Jesus on the airwaves at the same time. So the WhatsApp number to contact us from is 07. 86316316 and the SMS line 20316 and let's learn together today. So integrity, what is integrity, you know? And someone would say it's your ethical behaviors, how you behave or even how you pronounce words to when you're speaking to people, how you carry out yourself, you know, your behavior in general. That is what someone might define integrity to. But when we talk about serving with integrity, that is how you lead your people, you know, and someone would say, eh, that, that leader, that political leader, or that leader in our school is not serving with integrity. Well, that is what we want to look at today, serving with integrity. And we have in studio Imbugwa Injoli. Yeah. Thomas, yes. uh -huh, an advocate of the High Court who will help us understand that topic. But before we dive deep into that, let's have a listen and a look at this. Kenya's competitiveness is held back by high corruption levels that penetrate every sector of the economy. A weak judicial system, as said by many, and frequent demands for bribes by public officials lead to the increased business cost for foreign investors. Widespread tax evasion hinders Kenya's long-term economic growth, and fraud in public procurement is rampant. Leaders who demonstrate integrity often hold themselves to a high standard and will do what is right in spite of the consequences for him or herself. Do not promise that which he or she cannot deliver. Is fair in his or her expectations to others. Is ethical, honest in all his or her business dealings. Is worthy of the personal trust of others. Integrity is important for politicians because they are chosen, appointed or elected to serve society. To be able to serve, politicians are given power to make, execute and control policy. Dwight D. Eisenhower said, The supreme quality for leadership is unquestionable integrity. Without it, no real success is possible, no matter whether it is on a section gang, a football field, in an army, or in an office. Well, it is clear that integrity is a reliability, I may say, and actually something that is so much needed when it comes to leadership and that is what we want to talk about today so imbugwa injoli so i was asking earlier yes. and please allow me to repeat this you know <laughs> yes. why do you have the name imbugwa nasi imbugwa <laughs> <laughs> yeah well uh, a lot of people normally refer that name to our brothers from central kenya you are not from central no no, no i'm not from central okay. kenya <laughs> so i'd like to say today that uh, also from the western side of this country there are people having that name ah. yeah but ours has a w and an i wow yeah for central kenya it's uh, there's you. no i uh, yeah it's you there's a you yeah so All it's right. and there's imbugua wow yeah. sour today ni melan you know <laughs> so l let's just dive in into the discussion yes so what does it mean to 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 have integrity mm. mm -hmm. so integrity varies i will say it varies yeah. from uh, you see in kenya the environment uh, w what we have uh, our levels of integrity might be different from what the united states hold their leaders to mm -hmm. so i will say integrity varies from one person to another or rather from one country to another yeah. since integrity is interwoven with morality and ethics like mm -hmm. you had earlier said mm -hmm. and what might be moral to me might not be moral to you but as Kenyans, eh, we came together the 2010 constitution so that we can try at least to find a middle ground yeah. of this term known as integrity. Mm -hmm. So that instead of you having your own version, since maybe what is moral to me might be morally wrong to you. So yeah. we came together and agreed to have a, a standard for mm -hmm. our leaders and even us as citizens of this country. Mm -hmm. So let's say someone who has integrity basically has to be someone who observes the normal standards of morality of uh, of the society's morality okay for instance eh, you expected as an adult someone who's above 18 years mm -hmm. there's some certain way you should carry yourself and behave yeah so i'll say it's in that small aspect eh, that you you show your integrity for instance there should be a difference between you and a mad person since mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. a mad person is allowed to do certain things they can uh, walk uh, in public without clothes and uh, no one will question once they are told this person is mad mm -hmm. but we can't expect the the chief executive of a 
a blue chip company or other top company in Kenya to yeah. walk naked in the streets or mm -hmm. to the office, mm -hmm. we will start questioning the integrity because this person will say this person is not fit to hold that office okay. because of that that single act. Mm -hmm. So I'll say, uh, in my own understanding, someone who doesn't have integrity is uh, a person that uh, majority of what the society feels eh, is not, you don't fit in. Mm -hmm. You are a misfit. Mm -hmm. I would say a person, as long as you see that someone is a misfit, yeah. eh, then there and must be a problem with that person. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. I like that. And I like the way you have actually given an example of yes. uh, a leader of a company yes. somewhere. Yes. You know, a lot of people, when you talk about leadership, they mm. only think political. Yeah. Ways, you know, <laughs> someone would just yeah. say, uh, we political le leadership yes. is about politics. Yes. Not, not remembering that even a prefect in a classroom, yes. that's a leader. Yes. Yeah? Yes. Mm -hmm. And even to add, uh, you got, even the, the, uh, in, in terms of religion, the pastor's command huge huge crowds mm. and as you can see in this country we have various uh, pastors who are high profile yeah and i i believe you know they are the ones who you you say act and behave like pastors mm -hmm. and there are some who people question their question their ways and because mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. but you as you know like i said it's everyone to 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 determine on their own mm -hmm. as long as they're not breaking any law but that pastor is a leader he commands a very great uh, congregation yeah so from the way they conduct themselves, mm -hmm. you can people can start questioning: Is this really someone who people can can go to so for di for guidance mm -hmm. in matters concerning religion? All right. Yeah. So basically, integrity: uh, a person should be integral in terms that whatever you do, ensure that it agrees or aligns eh, mm -hmm. with what the society expects from you. All right. Yes. I like that. Well, y you mentioned the constitution, you yes. know, and. Uh, it clearly points out that there are some principles yes, that yes. should be followed so, so that we can say that this person yes. has integrity yes. and this one doesn't. Yes. So maybe you can help us highlight those principles, yes. Kidogo. So uh, the constitution, like I said earlier, we yeah. met as Kenyans mm -hmm. back in 2010. It's a journey that began long ago, yeah. but it was finalized in 2010. And uh, we came up with a very good constitution, mm -hmm. which unfortunately we are having challenges mm -hmm. implementing it, mm -hmm. but it's where uh, Rome was not built in a day. Yeah. So under chapter six of the constitution, there's the, it's a whole chapter on leadership and integrity all the way from Article 73 to 80. Mm -hmm. But specifically for the principles, uh, they are under Article 73 to... 73 to... Yes. All right. That is where you will find the guiding principles of who or how a person with integrity should uh, operate or mm -hmm. their day-to-day -day activities. Mm -hmm. So the first principle is accountability. Okay. Yeah, and uh, accountability means being accountable if we have given you work mm -hmm. and we, we ought to question. And when we raise those questions... Uh, I believe you should be able to account for if it's an eight to five job as our leader. Mm -hmm. If we ask you from uh, nine to, to ten. Where what, were you? Yes, what were you doing? Yes, yeah. there was a sitting in parliament. Mm -hmm. Did you attend? Mm -hmm. If you didn't attend, give us reasons. as to, So you should, be ac ac you should account for, for your actions. So if we ask the leader, did you attend for that sitting? Maybe it was talking about two-third gender rule. Mm -hmm. And your leader, your, your member of parliament was nowhere to be seen in parliament. Yeah. And that is a serious topic that mm -hmm. should be discussed. So if you ask them, why didn't you attend and maybe they fail to give you a reason or you see somewhere they are in Naivasha having <laughs> fun so <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. if he can't account then I, be, I think he fails mm -hmm. he fails already on the first principle yeah the second one is discipline and commitment uh -huh. so that's another thing C commitment to your cause because you came to the uh, voters for them to give you the seat as mm -hmm. a leader mm -hmm. but now once you have give, you have been given the seat you abandon your duties uh, schools need your attention. Yeah. There are hospitals. There's roads that need to be built. But people, you see people talk of, we elected him or her in 2017. Mm -hmm. The next time you see this person is in 2022 yeah, and they're coming he's back. Asking for yeah, yeah. <laughs> asking yeah. for more votes yeah. to go back to Nairobi and come back after five years. Mm -hmm. So that shows you're not committed. Because okay. I believe if it's a member of parliament or a senator or a member of county assembly or a governor, these people who elected you mm -hmm. are back in whatever location that you should be visiting them. Yeah. We understand the programs are busy, but you should find time for them because mm -hmm. they're the ones who put you there. Okay. And finding time means eh, you are committed because mm -hmm. if by your diary you don't have time for your, the ah, people who elect you. <laughs> <laughs> that that uh -huh. means they don't come first. Yes. And uh, on, on discipline, I think it's also how you, you carry yourself. Mm -hmm. Now that is where discipline comes in. Okay. Because it's not one or two times that we've heard of our leaders. Okay, it's okay to have fun. 
but you might find uh, cases where you hear this leader so and so was mm. in a nightclub and they caused a scuffle or mm. like you have seen recently leader so and so was in a, a nightclub he shot someone yes. so you know yes. it's about di personal discipline mm -hmm. because if you also fail on the part of discipline or floating traffic rules people are following traffic but you prefer to use the other lane the other lane yeah, yeah. the so, wrong side of yeah, the road and it's very common you yeah, know? yeah yeah us we are following it because we are disciplined mm. <laughs> and the leader is not you know and the leader is not following it so when you see it's the small things that matter mm -hmm. another principle is also selfless selfless service mm -hmm. as a leader you should be selfless all right and this comes in the sense you know once you're a leader opportunities come mm -hmm. in very very many ways opportunities and a lot of chances mm -hmm. and it's there and there and then that we we get to know who you are because they say if you want to know the true colors of a man you give him power yeah so it's at that point <laughs> now that we will get to know who this person is because if you have a, let's say you are a governor yeah that means you can influence a lot of things mm -hmm. there's the aspect of tenders where we hear now there's tenderpreneurs and uh, so and so <laughs> So mm. as a leader, you have that chance uh, of influencing. So what in Kenya, we have seen cases where there is uh, accusations that the leader has given tender X and Y to his to sister, brother and sister, mother. So you mm. see, you are not selfless. Mm. That means you don't think about your people. Mm -hmm. You think of yourself first. Okay. And uh, you to that means you totally fail uh, when it comes to, to, to chapter six of the, of the constitution mm -hmm. in terms of leadership and integrity. Yeah. Then... Uh, there's the other last principle, mm -hmm. which is being impartial in decision making. Being impartial. Impartial. Uh -huh. That means you don't favor any side. Yeah. Yeah. And this one, I will, I will, I will, I will uh, specifically uh, refer it to the the speakers of, let's say, the county assemblies, mm -hmm. and also the the national assembly, because you know there's a there's a time that the leader is in a, a position where he has to decide, mm -hmm. he or she has to decide mm -hmm. to to make a decision. So it's it's in these times eh, that you are called upon to 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 come and uh, and and give a decision that based on your understanding, not mm -hmm. being influenced on the under the table yeah. during night meetings. Because mm -hmm. many a times people like the governors say that uh, the MCA has colluded with the senator to impeach me. Yeah. Because yes, the the because it will be tabled before the speaker. Yes. And it's the speaker's mandate to ensure that process goes as per the law okay not as per what one side has. specific people are yeah saying. <laughs> ah, i like yeah, that so yeah those are the the the, the, the founding principles mm -hmm. so we we're supposed to use them on a day-to-day -day basis to gauge our leaders okay yeah so those are the principles all right so cutting across different um uh let's say categories yes do you think our leaders in kenya mm -hmm have these principles and are okay they might be having them because they might be having the constitution yes, yes. but are they living according to these principles according to you so according to me personally i will say we have a big problem in this country yeah and the the, the problem starts with the voter mm -hmm. because it is the voters who put those leaders in office mm -hmm. it's not any other those leaders don't put themselves there it's yeah. the voters yeah. and uh, unfortunately our demographic political demographics favor the candidate who is popular mm -hmm. or rather who has mm -hmm. money yes so when it comes to to election year people forget about chapter six people forget everything mm -hmm. that has to do with uh, chapter six you know even funny enough mm. we, we we are having kenyans who do, have never even read the constitution yeah. you know yeah. and that is where we fail yes as kenyans mm -hmm. so i will say uh after the election is when people realize this chapter six and leader so and so is not acting mm. according to to chapter six on mm -hmm. leadership and integrity so i would say most of our leaders in this country if we use these principles that mm -hmm. we have just highlighted mm -hmm. fail terribly they fail terribly on the part of uh, leadership and integrity yeah because i'm sure you are aware there are cases of leaders who are in court because they lacked discipline mm -hmm. it's not even concerning corruption discipline discipline mm -hmm he punched so and so he shot someone yeah or he slapped someone or mm -hmm. she she uh, abused a lot of things mm -hmm. which means they fail in terms of discipline mm -hmm. and the case of commitment like we have said yeah uh, because we know we, we we live in kenya and we know of these instances where mm -hmm. someone is elected and they don't come back after five years mm. or they come back once in a while and they come back in a 
four wheel vehicle they don't even step outside <laughs> a wave kwa yeah they kwa just dirisha, wave you know? and uh, off they go mm-hmm. so i will say there's a challenge and uh, in terms of numbers i'll say almost three quarter of our leaders okay. fail in terms of leadership and integrity three quarters yes. according to you yes all right so you know you know someone might say these principles are there mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. but what is the importance of making sure that you follow these principles mm-hmm. and especially in leadership mm-hmm. and i'll give you I'll, I'll, i want us to start from the lowest level yes. Yes. because leaders are not just born today and they become yes. leaders yes. it starts from chini kabisa yes, yes. when someone is a, a captain in school maybe yes, yes. and they assume these principles yes. and then it grows with them yes. so that when they become a big political person mm-hmm. then they cannot still follow the principles mm. so what are some of the important and the uh, importance of these principles when it comes to leadership so the the, the, the reasoning behind these principles eh? is you know we came together as a nation kenya mm, and yeah. there's somewhere we have to go there's a vision that we have for this country yeah. even uh, former president kibaki had a vision vision 2030 mm-hmm. i don't know how far we are we are all we are well almost 10 yeah, years, yeah, <laughs> <have> 10 years. <laughs> yeah. i don't know if we have even started implementing vision 2030 mm-hmm. so we'll see these principles were put in so that they can ensure we stay on track yeah. to our goals and visions mm-hmm. Each leader the member of county assembly when he's elected he has a manifesto mm-hmm. that he has to implement or he wants to implement mm-hmm. so it's through such principles that can ensure this person stays on track instance things like accountability because each financial year there are huge funds which will be allocated to your office yeah so we want to know how because if those funds are used well that is where you will see that Kenya is almost equivalent to USA in terms of development mm-hmm. but if those funds are mismanaged we will continue saying that we are a third world country and yes. we still have a long way to go yes so i will say uh, implementation of these principles at the 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 the, the, the lowest levels mm-hmm. uh, assist in uh, pushing the agenda of the national agenda and even our own personal agendas mm-hmm. so that we can move forward and uh, develop okay yeah All right. And also talking of the common monarchy. Yes. You know, when it comes to service delivery. Yes. I I feel like if these principles are actually taken care of mm-hmm. and if someone and a leader in this matter can just can just take them to be part of his daily yes. life, yes. then the service delivery, you know, mm-hmm. it will be better. Yes. Yeah. True. Uh-huh. So actually that is true like I said eh? on paper as per the constitution we have a very beautiful constitution <laughs> but yes. now on paper yes when yeah. it comes to implementing the constitution we are having mm-hmm. quite a challenge so we'll say we'll say that the monarchy is also a part of this problem mm-hmm. in the sense that if you want uh, services uh, you know that you elected that leader to, to yes to serve you yes and uh, if I could use an example of the constituencies mm-hmm. there is the CDF and uh, these bursaries mm-hmm. that uh, are allocated each financial year mm-hmm. so unfortunately you may find that uh, most of the constituencies before these bursaries are issued to whoever is given those bursaries eh, there's usually a lot of lobbying and mm-hmm. uh, meetings here and there issuing of uh, chai here and mm-hmm. there mm-hmm. so you see it's the common monarchy <laughs> who is pushing that agenda mm-hmm. because maybe they have normally people say they have been left with no option because they're saying if i don't give it out then i want to then get it to be given to someone else yes yeah. so you now you see if the monarchy wants service uh, delivery to mm-hmm. be timely and to be as per how it's supposed to be with integrity then they also have to to align themselves with chapter 6 because you can't expect your leaders to give you what you want mm-hmm. and yet yourself you, you're not following what because you would say okay i want to lead so and so to mm-hmm to to act and uh, to act according to what is provided in chapter 6. Yes. But you as the monainchi you're not doing the same. You have not Unapeana corruption. Yeah. You know, <laughs> if you want a job, yeah. you bribe if you want your kid to go to a good school, you you just ask ningapi tunafaa tutafute ndo mtoto. You see now if you mm-hmm. if you as the monainchi do mm-hmm. that then when the because it's at a small level what a 10,000. Yeah. And the leader will still 10 million or 10 billion. <laughs> so you That's see you can't complain yes mm-hmm. so we'll say it's 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 for the for the common monarchy to also follow these principles yeah. eh? and live by them mm-hmm. so that by the time you go to you you say that leader so and so is not 
acting according to this principle mm -hmm. it means you as an individual you have been living as per these principles all right yes we have a uh, uh, sydney washington from kisumu i believe integrity should basically start from childhood yes. which these days parents and teachers don't teach or show examples of to make change that's the point to start you know they say charity begins at home yeah true. <laughs> these days they say at home and in school <laughs> 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 because some parents just tell, like school is like home for other children uh, uh. so let's take it that way mm -hmm. at home and in school and sydney from kisumu is saying mm -hmm. that is the point to start mm -hmm. because if you do not raise your child in an in in a way that they will show integrity mm -hmm. then there is no way he'll come up to be a better leader yeah that yeah. is absolutely true and to add on to that uh, wahenga also said that uh, samaki mkunje angali Angali Mbichi. Mbichi, yeah yeah mm -hmm. and uh, i will say it's 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 true you have to start these things at a young age because mm -hmm. you know you know also children follow what their parents do or what they see at okay. home and in school mm -hmm. and like i've told you so you you, are, you you let's say you are a parent you have a child mm -hmm. and this child is uh, has not performed very well in the 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 the, the exams. kcpe exams mm -hmm. and you still want them to join kenya high or state house girls mm -hmm. or alliance girls so this ch you you tell your child eh, let's look, we we have someone who uncle so and so knows, Mahali, yes you know? so you see you are already telling this child eh? mm -hmm. uncle so and so is uh, is the principal of uh, Kenya high school so don't worry this marks should not should not stress you will still mm -hmm. go to that school this child knows they don't qualify yeah. to yeah. go to that yeah. school but uh, one way or another they find themselves in that school so you have already you know we might say that we train them mm -hmm. but i believe action is better yeah because what you do is what they will follow because if their parents manage to get them to that school and they mm -hmm. got away with it mm -hmm. the child will also know that so if i want uh, this and this done I can, and if i know so and so then it can easily happen mm -hmm. without anyone knowing or anyone questioning as long as uh, i ensure everyone is happy okay yes all right there's another one that has come in from sarah on Ivasha who's saying um uh, sometimes the leaders come to us very well they show a lot of integrity but once they are in office that's when unyamawao unatokea so again you know i would ask how am i as a person supposed to know that this is a principle of integrity and this is not even before election yeah like we have uh, earlier said uh, there are principles the the, the mm. four principles mm -hmm. four or five principles mm -hmm. that we've mentioned uh, discipline and commitment mm -hmm. accountability selfless service and the impartial and being impartial in decision making you know the problem is what akuja watuoneshe yes and they'll always be there hey i'm very disciplined mm. this time i'll go to church mm -hmm. uh -huh. next sunday i'll go to the other <laughs> you know, you know that that is what we yes, call yes, account. Yes. You know, the, the barabara I will make. Mm. They even pour maram for the for the first time. Yes. You know, but after they they they're in office, you mm -hmm. know, and now everything suddenly changes. Yeah. So in that case, eh, mm. the monainch is not left with any recourse. Yes. Because uh, such things were envisioned. Were, were people for thought about such a situation because mm -hmm. it has already been happening since 1964 mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah there are cases i was when i was growing up i was told there are some places where if they bring uh, the poles for electricity mm. and line them up so you know that electricity is coming yes but unfortunately <laughs> if you don't vote so and so then you those, never after the election the those poles will be removed again oh my goodness yeah. <laughs> so yeah. it has been happening so the the yeah the constitution foresaw that and uh, it is through that uh, then that where now the words like impeachment and uh, uh -huh. recalling a leader right. were formulated mm -hmm. so in the case of uh, the counties for the governor there is now what they call impeachment all right if you feel this person truly came to us uh, and said this and this and this during the election period mm -hmm. but now it's two years down the line they have contrary gone to what they promised and have even broken some laws yes there's uh, there's legal recourse and i believe the perfect example is uh, of uh, kiambu county, kiambu here, county yeah. where they they took that that avenue because they felt the former governor mr waititu 
did not live up to his election promises mm -hmm. and he even went ahead uh, to to violate chapter 6 of the constitution yeah they you begin the impeach, impeachment motion which is provided for mm -hmm. under the county governments act okay yeah and uh, for the uh, for the members of county assembly and for the members of uh, national assembly there's also a process for that you can recall as a monainchi you can recall you're a member of parliament mm -hmm. if you feel they're not living up to to yes, what they standard. said yes yeah. So the law didn't leave the city, the Mwanainchi helpless, saying mm -hmm. now I'll have to wait after five years. No, there's still time as long as uh, you feel that person has indeed uh, contravened, mm -hmm. or rather they're against what they preached to water and now they're drinking, they're drinking wine. wine. So wine, yeah. you yeah. have that option. All right. Yes. And you you pointed that out, and I remember um, some of the propositions that were being given by the biggest human rights uh, organization yes. in our country, that yes. is KNHRC. Yes. And they said that uh, they're actually proposing that mm -hmm. if your name is attached to any corruption deal, then your name should not be in the ballot come the next election period. Do you think that is a right move? And can it even be achieved in our country? So uh, for that, I will say... It's, it's, it's quite unfortunate that uh, it's a little bit far-fetched mm -hmm. because, like I've told you, we have to, our demographics, political demographics, we spend a lot of money in, uh, in politics, yeah. a lot, a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And uh, I will say it's always a case of innocent until proven guilty, mm -hmm. not guilty until proven innocent. Mm -hmm. Because now what the commission uh, is trying to do is to, to brand... Uh, leaders guilty until proven innocent mm -hmm. because even like avalia said concerning recalling your leader your yeah. member of county assembly or your member of national assembly mm -hmm. you cannot just recall them because you as sarah feel the need to recall them yeah there is a process mm -hmm. and the, the law says that uh, this leader must have gone to court and been convicted or found guilty yeah either yeah. of an election offense mm -hmm. Or of any other offense. Mm -hmm. Abuse of office. Yes. You know? Once they are yeah. found guilty, mm -hmm. that is when you can start recalling. You are saying, now, listen, guys, this guy went to court, he was mm -hmm. found guilty, so we can recall him. It is up to that point. Okay. But if they have not been found guilty, you cannot exercise your right to recall your leader. Mm -hmm. Because that means eh, they, have not, they have not broken any law as per the, as per the court. All right. So I will say if on, 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 on that issue... It's a little bit far-fetched because, yes, they've been mentioned. We should leave the, 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 the courts to do their work. Mm -hmm. The investigative agencies should also do their work. Then once everything is done and uh, the truth has been found, uh, mm -hmm. we can now say so-and-so was found guilty by okay. the court. All right. So we should now move to remove them from office or in the next election, they should not be in the ballot, the ballot because they are found guilty, so they have no business being in the ballot. All right. But until then... I think they should be on the ballot because every person has a right to go for office in this right. country. Mm -hmm. And uh, let the lead... Now, you know, like I told you, it's a, it's a question of morality. So if you feel, even though they have not been found guilty by the court, mm -hmm. but you are a voter, you have a vote. Yeah. You can exercise your right... And vote for a at the ballot. Yes, at yeah. the ballot. <laughs> yeah. Because the court process eh, might take longer. Mm -hmm. So, But you, you have a vote. So come election time, they will be on the ballot because it's their right. But you also have a right to vote whoever you feel is acting in accordance to Chapter 6. All right. Yeah. Okay. Yes. And I will ask you the same question. Do mm. you think that uh, everyone, every leader whose name is connected to any corruption deal, do you think the name should be in the ballot come the next election? So text me in your responses, 0786-316-316. That is on WhatsApp SMS line 20316. Now SMS ni one bob So in the meantime, we also went to the streets and asked the same, same question. And this is what some people had to say. Ata ukisikika, tu ukusikika, tu kwamba umeusika. Eh? Kwa sababu hii sakata ya corruption imekuwa nyingi. Na sio ni kama watu, watu wanakufa hospitali juu ya corruption. Imagine mtu anaenda hospitali anachukua pesa za wagonjwa. Mtu akiwa named in corruption, Kenya sikuko na investigating authorities. Si mtu undergo the full process of the law. Eh, kama ni DCI ifanye kazi yake, court zifanye kazi yake, akipatikana yenyewe kweli yako guilty, asi wasimkubali. Unajua wazungu na sisi tuko tofauti. Eh. Sisi unaona kuna ile time yenye kimunya sijui alikuwa amefanya ganini. Sijui kama unaweza kumbuka. 
Eh, siki muya alisema alisema I'd rather die than resign. Unaona? So unfortunately hivyo ndio venye Afrika tuko. Mimi ningeona kwanza hata kama hujapatikana lakini kuna some watu wanafikiria ama umesensiwa kuwa uko corrupt. Kitu ya kwanza ningeoma mtu kwanza atolewe kwa kama ni kiongozi atolewe kuongozi na ni ni right yake ya kuvai for another seat ikuwe council kwanza. Well, clearly different people have different opinions about this. I also want to know what you think about it. Well, and uh, I want us to, well, we still have Imbugwa Injoli in studio, an advocate of the High Court who's uh, telling us and educating us more about integrity and serving with integrity. And I want us to look at some of the questions that have come in, Mr. Imbugwa. Mm -hmm. So we have, uh, uh, my name is Sharon. Thank you so much for that discussion. I support the notion that it all starts at home. Charity begins at home. Yeah? Yes. You're, so, you're also in agreement yes, with that? Yes, I'm in agreement with <laughs> that because uh, I will say Kenya is a Christian nation, though not officially, but mm -hmm. majority of the population are mm -hmm. Christians. Yes. And, uh, yes. If we follow the biblical teachings, uh, we see that uh, all the all the, the 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 people in the Bible, they were brought up according to godly ways, mm -hmm. and uh, as we know, godly ways there are certain things that uh, are prohibited or rather are shunned away from. Mm -hmm. Which means if you if you if you raise your your child according to those ways, there's there's no way this child will uh, grow up to be someone contrary in future, mm -hmm. not unless they decide to do so. Yeah. Yeah. All right. And there's also someone else who is supporting this. Uh Unasema Unaitwa Vita. Vita from Is this Ikunji? I don't understand the place, but please <laughs> text me back where you're listening in from. Mm -hmm. But he's saying, uh I support that notion. You know, uh, when children are taken good care of and they are shown on how to behave with integrity, even in schools, we will eliminate the issue of bullying especially among prefects. That's true, you know, yes. and and I've been meaning to ask, you know, who's to blame for these children who bully other children in schools, especially. You know, uh, uh, fortunately or unfortunately, nowadays uh, is uh, it's quite different from when I was growing up or when you were growing up, mm. because back then mm -hmm. the, the child belonged to the society, yes. the parent, and uh, other other generally the church even mm -hmm. but uh, in the current generation the child belongs to the parent alone yeah so you there's no way you can see so uh, your neighbor's child uh, breaking the law or fighting in the streets and you let's say you you try and apprehend them so that uh, they can stop fighting or doing whatever they're doing because mm -hmm. you might do that and uh, you're your the one who is in court. The yes, your day. neighbor will yeah. come to you and tell you why did you so and so, and they go and report it to the police mm. for trying to stop a fight or ap uh, apprehend that child because they were breaking the law, they were yeah. doing something wrong. Mm -hmm. So I believe uh, if people wanted that, because it's a huge responsibility, uh, people are not stupid when they, 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 they chose the child to belong to the society also because they knew as a parent you might be very busy mm -hmm. uh, trying to, to make a better life for a child. So there are other people who should come in and assist you in ensuring this child grows as per as per as per as per no, normal ways. Mm -hmm. But now, if you choose to ensure that you are the only person who has the, that mandate, because you have a lot on your plate, uh, you have a, a job, you, there are other things. So definitely, you will overlook most of the things that uh, concern your child, and All that right. is where the problem begins. Mm -hmm. Yes, We have uh, Karis who's texting in, uh, Anasema, I support the notion that they should go through good justice before their name is eliminated from the ballot, mm -hmm. but again, this can also be a leeway for leaders to engage in corrupt deals, knowing that they will be excused. So, 50-50. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> mm -hmm. I would like to tell him to have faith in our judiciary mm -hmm. because the the, the 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 it's 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 working. It's working. It's a work in progress. Yeah. Even though um, at this point we I'm have some issues, you know. Yes. Someone might lose hope in the judiciary yes, because yes. they might say we have a weak quote unquote mm. judiciary system. Yeah. But I will say we are making progress. Yeah. We are making progress, and. Uh, the citizens should have faith in judi the judiciary mm -hmm. because it's a work in progress and uh, I believe there are some cases that the judiciary is handling well mm -hmm. and there are others uh, that they're, 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 you know you cannot place the blame on the judiciary alone because 
it takes different agencies to come together to ensure the case is coming to an end. All right. There's the, 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 the director of criminal investigation, mm -hmm. there's the office of the uh, DPP. So, you know, when these offices uh, fail or lag in their mandate, mm -hmm. unfortunately, the burden is placed on the, on judiciary, the judiciary alone. System. Because <laughs> people believe once the, court, the case is in court, it's the judiciary and judiciary alone that deal to that matter. But that is not the truth. Mm -hmm. The truth is that all these agencies work with the judiciary to ensure this case goes to the end. Okay. Yes. All right. We have Alan who's saying, hi, Sarah, say hi to our guest. On the question, I think we as Kenyans should exercise our voting rights well by electing leaders with integrity because they, all, they can also corrupt their ways into the ballot, even with regulation in place. Have a great evening. Have a good one, too. And thank you so much for that response, Alan. So really, we should exercise our vote, our right as voters. Yes, that is the most surest way that you can have mm -hmm. uh, of ensuring that leaders who fail the test don't appear yeah. anywhere close to office because it's your vote. And like we said, it's a one man, one vote. Mm -hmm. So that means if you decide today leader so-and-so will not be in office because I will not elect them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And another person decides so. And uh, we have a huge group of voters deciding the same thing, mm -hmm. then that leader will not be in office. There's no way they will they will find their way to that office. Yep. Yes. All right. Uh, we have someone else who is uh, Livingstone uh, in Thika. Corruption first is prohibited in the Bible, but in order to say someone is corrupt, they must be proven by the court to be corrupt. Let everyone who wants leadership uh, must be clean from corruption, but so sudden, so sudden that Kenya corruption is used as a way of getting votes through bribing voters. It's so saddening. Then the last thing to fight corruption in Kenya, remove traffic officers on the roads. <laughs> you know, that, that is Livingstone's idea. And, you know, it's it's a discussion that has been going on, especially in the if you go through the social media traffic platforms. You'll see a lot of people are complaining that traffic officers get a lot of money just because of corruption. You know, I have a, a broken side mirror. And just because I squeeze 50 shillings in his arms, then that's it. And these are our leaders, you know? Yes. They're the leaders when it comes to security issues. Uh, yeah. Yes. On on that matter also, like I had earlier said, mm. everything that is wrong with this nation mm -hmm. in terms of leadership and mm -hmm. integrity and uh, all these matters pertaining corruption mm -hmm. goes back to the voter. The common monainchi okay. also has a problem mm -hmm. because... The, the traffic officers have gotten used to it because the people have normalized it. Yeah. Yeah, you know, uh, I have uh, broken uh, headlights. It's mm -hmm. okay, I'll, I'll still go because if you find a traffic officer so and so, uh, you'll just give him 50, because you'll say it's only 50 bob, so mm. it doesn't matter. Mm. And another person comes and gives him the same amount of money. But now when it becomes a huge problem, that's when now we start blaming the whole institution. Yeah saying, no, these traffic of officers should be removed. Mm -hmm. But it's us who give them those bribes. Yeah. Hmm. So we should, be, you, you know, it's, it's, very, it's very unfortunate that mm. sometimes we are the ones who make these things happen. We actualize them. Yes. And knowingly, sometimes unknowingly, because it's a norm. Like giving bribes <laughs> to someone is a norm, you know? We, in Kenya, we have normalized it. Yeah. We have normalized it. Because people say, you know, I want to save time. I have a meeting. Mm. So instead of me staying here on the roadside and uh, telling me to, to, to accompany you to the station, mm. why don't you take this so that we can save on each other's time? Mm. Let me go. I will fix, I will fix the, 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 the vehicle. Yeah. But when you left where you, you, are, you, are, you are coming from, you knew this vehicle was not in good it had condition. had a problem, yeah. But mm. you still chose. You had other alternatives of of, of moving from uh, where you were to the mm -hmm. meeting. Mm -hmm. But you, you you went knowing that I know uh, I can make it happen, or rather I'll just clear the way for myself. Yeah. So it's we we can't put the blame on one side. Mm -hmm. It's us as individuals. We should uh, do a lot of soul searching and go back to the drawing board because there's a huge problem. Okay. Everyone, if, uh, majority of the citizens are mm -hmm. facilitating corruption in this country. Okay. Yes. All right. Uh, so here is a leader. He's corrupt. Mm. You know. Yes. He's not doing anything in regards and the in, in regards to the principles of mm. integrity. Yes. Is there a way that we can work around this? 
according to the constitution are there consequences of someone who is not practicing integrity especially in leadership yes there are consequences mm -hmm. there are consequences and uh, uh, fortunately the constitution provided for that and uh, still under the chapter of leadership and integrity mm -hmm. they provided that uh, if this leader fails this they call it the integrity test mm -hmm. fails these principles uh, the parliament should have uh, legislations that uh, provide for removal from office yeah so in, in the counties the, the, there was the county government act which now stipulates the the procedures for removal of a governor mm -hmm. from office under even a member of county assembly yeah so very quickly i would say for a governor the, the whole process is not an impeachment process mm -hmm. so where if the the, the 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 people feel that this governor is 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 not uh, integral or rather is failing on this chapter mm -hmm. You can uh, request your MCS to to start collecting signatures, and yeah. the, and the threshold has been provided. You should be a third mm -hmm. of the members mm -hmm. should sign to have that motion tabled in the floor of the county assembly. Yeah. From there, that motion should be should be supported by two thirds of the members, mm -hmm. so that it can sail through. And once it has been supported by two thirds of the members, then I will say the governor has been impeached. Mm -hmm. But the process does not start, does not stop at that point, because the governor is also has rights. Yeah. So he has the right to challenge that process. Mm -hmm. and That's uh, where they now file for an appeal and yes, all that. Yes, uh, they uh -huh. go to the Senate, mm -hmm. and the Senate also has now the Senate will also decide on the same process. Okay. Yes, because the Senate is oversighting the county governments. Mm -hmm. So once the governor goes to the Senate, he will be given a fair chance to defend himself, so that they can see if he's found guilty, mm -hmm. then the Senate will also vote. And uh, have him go home, like yeah. we saw in Kiambu County, where uh, Mr. Waititu went to the Senate, and uh, he failed to convince them, and they declared him guilty yeah. that he had failed on Chapter Six. Mm -hmm. uh, for the members of County Assembly, like Adadia, had earlier mentioned, uh, there is uh, what we call recalling the mm -hmm. member of County Assembly, mm -hmm. where if you as citizens feel, or you as a voter feel that this uh, member of County Assembly is not acting according to Chapter Six. Mm -hmm. But there's a, there's a clause there that says uh, you, this can only happen if the court has found Proven this person guilty. guilty. Okay. Yes. Okay. So if your leader is taken to court and they are found guilty, then from there, as members of the county assembly, because you know the the works court, the court's work is to found is to find this leader guilty, mm -hmm. but not to remove them from office. Yeah. It's, you, the court can't remove you from most office because uh, it's not the court that elected you. Mm -hmm, it's mm -hmm. the voters. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, we are a democratic republic. Yeah. So, we uh, once the the person has been found guilty, now the the voters can move very quickly to mm -hmm. collect signatures and petition the county assembly to have mm -hmm. this member removed, removed from, from office, office because he has the court has said he has failed and. Uh, now the process has to take place. Okay. Same for the member of county, uh, member of parliament. Mm -hmm. If the members of the constituency feel that this person is not acting according to chapter six, uh, the process should follow the law. They should go to court. Once they have been found guilty, the voters can now move mm -hmm. to petition parliament to have this leader recalled. All right. And now, f specifically, the constitution also, pro luckily, it also provides for the president and the deputy president. Oh, really? Yes, okay. under Article 1. And it's this standard of the president and the deputy president mm -hmm. that has been used across for all leaders under uh, Article 144. Mm. Because it's also the same. If the members of uh, the National Assembly feel that the president of this country is really failing in uh, implementing Chapter 6 of the Constitution on Leadership and Integrity, mm -hmm. then they can begin collecting signatures. Wow. And they only need a third of the numbers in okay. the House. Mm -hmm. Once they have the signatures, the motion can be tabled in, uh, in, in, parliament. The, in parliament. You know, literally if people fail to understand that we yes. have power in our hands. The, the power is there. Mm -hmm. It's the sensitization that is, uh, is not there. Because mm -hmm. majority of the citizens uh, are not aware of their rights okay. in terms of uh, matters pertaining elections All right. and how to deal with leaders. Mm -hmm. yes. I like the take of John here, who mm -hmm. is saying, uh, 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 on leadership, leaders are the reflection of our society. If we start by examining on ourselves, making the right choices rationally, then we would have a better reflection representing us. That's my take. That's John. Yes. You know, and yeah. clearly he's saying the power is in our hands. Yeah. 
And uh, we have uh, someone else who's texting in, Vasu. Thank you so much for your message. You're enjoying the show, Asante Sana. Uh, we have, um, mm -hmm. you did not give me your name, but you're saying, I like the discussion. Thank you so much for that. It has really opened my eyes. I didn't even know that the president can also be removed in office when he's found guilty. Thank you for that. Uh, uh, that I open up. Well, yeah. A lot of people don't know that we have the powers. Yeah. And I also want us to talk about something else. You know, we said that it starts with an individual. Yes. So personal integrity. How am I as an individual supposed to build personal integrity? Despite the fact that we said charity begins at home, the parents play a very big role. But then as a person, as an individual, how can I build personal integrity? So as an individual, I will say we still ought to rely to the constitution yeah because it's the it's it's the, it's the grunom or rather the highest law in the land mm -hmm. so if we expect our leaders to abide by chapter six on leadership and integrity mm -hmm. why should intuanjiku also abide by chapter six on yeah. leadership and integrity yes because it is only at that point that when wanjiku relies on that chapter and uh, on leadership and in integrity mm -hmm. that is when he or she will know mm -hmm. what to expect from the leader yeah and not what they have been told. They will know because they practice it. Mm -hmm. They will know like uh, accountability. This mm -hmm. is accountability. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's a, on a personal level, you should also embrace the principles, accountability. Okay. Yeah, if uh, Wanjiku is uh, the treasurer of her chama mm -hmm. back at the, the, the market, but once the members have contributed some money some of it she can't account for for 200 shillings yeah. because maybe she used it to to buy to buy food for her family but she can't account for it mm -hmm. she'll start saying i don't think you you gave me that money <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, uh, yesterday i didn't collect any money from you for mm -hmm. the charmer mm -hmm. you see it starts if she, she if she can uh, she can get away with that 200 shillings but when she sees in the news that uh, governor so and so cannot account for the one billion that was allocated to county county so and so mm. she starts getting furious wondering yeah. why is this happening we are failing as a nation mm -hmm. you start going to the streets but you as an individual are not practicing it mm -hmm. so we'll say on a on a personal level people should uh, practice accountability in whatever you do it's not only in uh, finances whatever you do you should practice accountability okay selfless service and selfless uh, service. Yes, selfless mm -hmm. service, which means you put uh, the, the people that you serve uh, around, uh, they should come first and mm -hmm. not yourself or mm -hmm. those close to you. Because you might be uh, a, a boss somewhere in the mm -hmm. office, mm -hmm. but unfortunately when uh, each and every opportunity arises, it's either yours or for your friends You're, in the office. Yeah, yeah. You don't think of that person who is qualified for that for that uh, for that opportunity mm -hmm. uh, there is also uh, impartial in decision making it also starts uh, like we see at home mm -hmm. uh, you let's say you're a parent having more than one child there are two or three but when it comes to decision making there's the way these children can tell that the parent is favoring really favoring one, one child yeah, yeah. you see you're also failing in some way on chapter six mm -hmm. on leadership and integrity mm -hmm. because, because you're also yes, the leader of your family you're the leader you know? of your family yeah. this uh, these children look up to you so if instead of you making uh, impartial decisions they can clearly see that you favor one person or one child yeah so you in the, it's in the small ways mm. uh, that we should embrace all these principles in our day-to-day -day lives discipline you know you walk up late so there's a lot of traffic on the road but you choose to use uh, shortcuts that maybe do not allow because there are some roads in this country that uh, do not allow the vehicles if it's a gazetted road or, mm -hmm. but you choose to use that road because it will lead you to town faster than mm. that you're breaking the law but you say i'll i'll give that uh, watchman on that other side uh, 50 shillings so he'll just so you get to the office uh, mm -hmm. on time mm -hmm. so you see you're failed in discipline or you 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 you, you engage in uh, other funny behaviors uh, yeah and uh, when uh, a leader does the same thing, you <laughs> you question, you, know? <laughs> you start questioning. Like, we are always very fast to judge, you know. <laughs> because you know what these leaders do, it's it's not something strange. It's something that happens in our day to day lives. Mm -hmm. It's only that when uh, a person of their caliber does it, that it blows out of proportion. Mm -hmm. Because we we do not expect them to do that, or okay. we don't think they can they can also do such things. Mm -hmm. So it starts at a personal level. If w someone wants to embrace 
leadership and integrity on a personal level, then it should start on their day-to-day -day lives in each and everything they do. They should be accountable. They should uh, be selfless. Mm -hmm. They should be disciplined and committed mm -hmm. to, to whatever cause that they are doing. And uh, they, should also, they should also be impartial yeah. in the decisions that they make, however small they make. Do not do not favor yourself and yes. the people around uh, you. Uh, correct. Okay. All right, I like that. Well, the lesson I have learned today is that personal integrity and to change someone who is leading without integrity starts with me. Yes, yeah, that it, is very we, I have the power in my hands. Mm -hmm. And I hope you got that right too. Thank you so much, Mr. Welcome. Imbugwa, for yes. coming today. Yeah, and thank you so very much for enlightening us about the Constitution and what it says about um, leadership and integrity. Mm -hmm. Have yourself a beautiful evening. Thank you, All and right. you too. Thank you. And thank you so much for tuning in to This Is The Day. My name is Sarah Otieno. I hope you ha you learned a thing or two today because tomorrow again is a learning day. So I'll see you then. Thank you.